Hello and welcome to the second lecture of the Glacier part of uh, Geos 120, Geos 119. Today we are going to talk about how snow transforms into ice and forms glaciers. We're going to introduce the concept of mass balance that is very important for us as glaciologists. We're going to see the anatomy of glaciers and uh, the sea ice. So let's start work with anatomy of a glacier. Um, how do they work? So if you recall last lecture, uh, we said we need um, freezing temperatures and precipitation to create snow. And eventually uh, that happens mostly in mountainous areas where you have a bit of topography uh, of altitude. So you have the clouds that are dumping some snow on the ground. Uh, and eventually that snow will not melt away at the end of the year or during the summer. And what it will do is that it will accumulate. And as you accumulate a lot of snow, it will gradually transform into ice. So let's take this glacier and go at the top of it in what we call the accumulation area, where you have uh, where the ice is accumulating, where the ice is not melting. And you dump snow on here, uh, in there, in the accumulation area, the top of the accumulation area. <clears throat> and this snow will transform into fern and neve. Uh, fern is the intermed intermediary step between snow and ice. Uh, fern is basically snow that has been uh, surviving more than one summer. And this new fresh ice that is created at the top of the glacier will gradually be buried uh, in the glacier and will start flowing downhill pass through this limit that we call the equilibrium or snow line and finally enter the ablation area where at some point it will melt away. Uh, this is a very important concept that glaciers are divided into two main parts, the accumulation area, so in green where the ice is not melting away, and the ablation area where the ice is melting away. So you can have a bit of melt in the accumulation area, but uh, what happens is that the amount of ice that is created is much bigger than the amount of ice that melts away. And it's the exact opposite in the oblation area, where most of the ice is melting away. We are talking about inputs and outputs. Inputs being the snow that's being dumped on the glacier, and outputs that is uh, all the melt of the ice or calving. Uh, so evaporation or sublimation and um, <clears throat> calving events. Uh, and the transition between the accumulation area and the oblation area is called the equilibrium line of the glacier. <clears throat> That's something we will cover also during a bit more during during this uh, this lecture. So let's start with uh, the notion of density. It's extremely important in glaciology <clears throat> because. Um, materials have different densities and it, mat it matters if we are talking about water about ice because those two materials have very different densities same with snow so density is basically you i think you saw that during the volcano part but uh i could be wrong density is uh how much material in terms of weight in terms of mass can i fit into a volume a specific volume so let's take a bottle of water, uh, Nalgene, one liter, and let's put some snow into there. Or, and in another bottle, we'll put some ice. And in another bottle, the third bottle, we'll put some water. So you have water, you have ice, and you have snow. <clears throat> Which volume do you think fits the most material? So one of the hints are icebergs. Icebergs are floating on the water. So what you have is the solid phase of the H2O molecule. Ice is floating in the liquid phase of the molecule. And there's an interesting anecdote about that is uh, water, H2O is one of the rare material, one of the rare materials that where the solid form is actually floating on top of the liquid form. <clears throat> A lot of materials, if you put, let's say, um, some metal that is solid and you dump it into liquid metal, then it will sink to the bottom. So actually water is denser in its liquid phase. Uh, that's the uh, base unit of, of, um, of volume. 
uh, water uh, can hold one kilogram per liter. Ice is about 0 0.9 kilograms per liter, while snow varies a lot between 0 0.05 kilograms to a few hundred kilograms of matter per liter. And so the density is really that a unit that translates the amount of mass per volume that you have. So if we if we take now the same amount of volume that we had, water, ice, and snow, but we melt everything, we see that the amount of ice that was filling the bottle of water, the equivalent in water is actually 90% of, of that whole uh, bottle of ice. And for snow, because we said that the density of snow, oops, sorry, was about 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 kilograms uh, per liter, then if you melt all the snow that one liter of snow that you had, it will only represent um, 0 0.1 liter of water in your bottle. That's very important because uh, when we are talking about ice, uh, eventually in glaciology, we talk about uh, water equivalent, meaning that I could talk about the volume of a glacier and say this glacier is one cubic kilometer, one cubic mile. Um, actually, if I consider the amount of water that this ice is equivalent to, then it won't be a cubic mile, it will be less than that. And that's actually uh, the start of the second part.